Hello everybody, 4Star here, and I just want to give you guys a disclaimer for what you guys are going to see uh, upcoming next. Now, I usually don't do these. Now, you guys know, if you guys have been either a long time viewer of the channel, you just came here and subscribed, by the way, thank you for that. I, I already told you guys, I've only adjusted my sliders one time, and that was midway through season one when I went from all pro to all Madden. And I did a did and I did do some research uh, about uh, Mano Four, and did some slider adjustments. And this is what I've been rolling with the entire time. So now I know you guys see the blocking and the running back ability is a little bit buffed up, but uh, it was recommended to me from uh, not only the Operation Sports forums but from people I uh, I talked to uh, that play Mad uh, Mano Four. And they said that this is more ideal, like having blocking up, having running back ability uh, slightly up, and having run blocking up. Meanwhile, having uh, wide receiver catching and Q QB accuracy the way it is. And uh, we'll just we'll 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 go through all of it. I have my defensive awareness up. Interceptions are down for both CPU and uh, uh, Mew as a human player. Uh, tackling is up though. Um, so we could get more, uh, tackling and more, uh, you know, more suction on the tackles. Um, uh, kicking is up. I both had it up for, um, the, what's called it, the, um, CPU as well, but I did reduce the, um, like the punk accuracy and the field goal accuracy because they do like kind of beam these field goals almost all the time. Um, but after all that, I mean, everything else is pretty good. This is, I, I left the field goal length and the punt length untouched. I did increase the field goal length for my kicker uh, because of the fact that the all Madden uh, kicking is absolute crazy craziness. Like, it's very, very fast. And as you've seen from my recent episodes, I have been missing. But I just wanted to show you guys this because, you know, it's... It, it, it was an insane game. I'm not even going to lie to you. I've, this is probably one of the most insane games I've ever had. But, I mean, with these exact same sliders, I've been blown out with these sliders. I've had close games with these sliders. I've had close losses. I've close wins. And, you know, even in the playoffs, I've never touched these sliders. I went from uh, all pro to all Madden uh, in the middle of season one once again. And I adjusted these accordingly. And I just want to forewarn you guys, still did not touch these sliders uh, just be prepared with what you're going to see. I did. I am going to have it cut up uh, really, really slowly. I mean, like, really, really nicely, so it's going to be a quick video. But, uh, yeah, let's get on to the actual video. Hello, everybody. Four Star here, and we are back with another NFL Madden 2004 Jets franchise video. And this time, we have a bye week here in week 9. But in week 10 and 11, we do take on the Bills and the Raiders. So I thought this was a good time to see what's going on here. Uh, at the middle of the season who's won player of the week these last few weeks and uh let's see who is in the pro bowl or not and uh you know just uh, looking at the mvp rankings and all that while we have this bye week so let's simulate this week and let's go right into the stats all right, so taking a look at the stands here for the AFC, we are still sitting high two games ahead of everybody else here. 8-0, Chargers, Broncos, Chiefs, all in all with six wins. The Patriots fall to 6-3 after I believe they had a 6-1 record, so I believe they are uh, they have lost two straight so far. Some five-win teams. We got the Ravens and the Titans. Um, the Texans are still up there. Uh, the Steelers, Bengals, Browns. Uh, all of these teams are definitely in the hunt. And then you got the bottom tier teams, Jaguars, Colts, Raiders. But uh, it looks like the Texans might win this division here, unless I am mistaken. Yeah, it looks like they're going to win this division. I really don't see um, even like the Colts winning this division. They're on a slump right now. I believe Peyton Manning was injured for a majority of the first half of the season. So it's, it's definitely a struggle for the AFC, but let's take a look at the NFC here. So taking a look here at the NFC, it looks like it's shaping up pretty well. Here, the greatest show on turf still doing their thing. Uh, Michael Vick's Falcons still doing their thing. Packers, a little bit struggling, but they're six and three. Five win teams, the Eagles and the Bears. Four win team, you got the Seahawks only. Three win teams, it's a definite struggle here at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, especially for the 49ers, man. The 49ers, they have been riddled with injuries. Of course, last season, you guys know um, Terrell Owens got a career-ending injury. Um, Lee Evans this season was injured. Uh, I believe their quarterbacks were injured. They've been working with uh, Ken Dorsey. Shout out Miami. 
um, for like the majority of the season. They just got a win this week, so they are now they are now three and five. But yeah, it's been a struggle for them, and uh, yeah, a lot of struggling teams here. Buccaneers, what a fall from grace. They went to the Super Bowl last season. Now they're two and six. Panthers are one and seven. Giants even. I guess the um, the Philip Rivers experiment wasn't working. I believe they uh, they brought in uh, well the. Cowboys brought in David Carr, but I believe they brought in somebody else to take over for um, Philip Rivers. They're two and six. It's just a pretty terrible, terrible job here, at least at the bottom of the NFC. But it is really shaping up to see who the top uh, NFC teams are this season. So let's get right into the stats here. So here is our passing leaders rating is Brett Favre, of course, Kurt Warner, and a uh, rookie Dustin Long. He has definitely shown himself out here with uh, 13 touchdowns, four picks, and 1,500 yards. As you can see, we are near the bottom. We're near the bottom half of like the top tier. We do have a lot of yards. We are leading the league in yards, I believe. No, it's Brett Favre who's leading the league. Well, last episode, we did have a, a kind of a couple stinkers here from Chad Pennington. He's got 16 picks. I don't believe he's going to be nowhere near the uh, MVP rankings now with Brett Favre and even um, with uh, Kurt Warner still around and Dustin Long even uh, uh, making a, a case for himself. So it's not looking pretty good for our boy Chad, but uh, the league is looking pretty healthy so far. Brett Favre is leading the league in touchdowns and he probably even touched down the INT ratio. I would say so. You can you can make a claim for Dustin Long here, but yeah, it is really shaping up to be Brett Favre's MVP season. Rushing here, we are right on par. Marshall Falk, of course, going above and beyond. Uh, already 1,100 yards this season. He looks like he's going to be gearing up for a 2,000-yard season, uh, barring injuries. Uh, Curtis Martin, right now, he's doing so far so good. Looking like he's going to have his personal best 1,600-yard season so far. Maybe even 1,700 yards, seven touchdowns. Uh, who is the league leaders in touchdowns? Look like it's just Marshall Falk and Curtis Martin here. Michael Vick even making a claim here uh, uh, for MVP with six touchdowns himself and 9.8 yards per carry. Uh, uh, of course, Marshall Falk always getting a rock here. And uh, we are, we're kind of near the uh, the top here, 152 carries. You got to give it to uh, Curtis Martin when we give him the chance. But this is definitely uh, some good company here for one of the best running backs in the game here. Of course, you got uh, Priest Holmes, Clinton Portis, uh, even Michael Bennett, and the Deuce. Here for receiving, you can also see Donald Driver is Brett Favre's favorite here. Eight touchdowns already. Isaac Bruce is our touchdowns leader. Yards is going to be Donald Driver. Right behind him is Randy Moss. And I do not see any Jets around here. You got to go all the way down to about like a uh, like a... Uh, 12th place, I would say, uh, to see Santana Moss here, our league leader and our team leader in uh, receiving yards with 504 and five touchdowns. Blocking here, enough said. Of course, Fabini, McKenzie, BJ Askew, he's even turning into a GOAT already. Zai looks like he's going to be his final year at 37 years old. I, he might have one more a season left in him, but I doubt it. Uh, but, uh, Look at uh, Rob Petiti here. Looks like a rookie. And he's got already 35 plus pancake. That is pretty good for uh, one of the rookie left tackles here. Of course, um, the lineman here in uh, the rookie selection usually does get buried in a depth chart. So you do see a familiar faces. But uh, yeah, so far so good for our blocking. Defense here, you might not see a lot of Jets here. Earl Holmes is our tackles leader. Uh, Mixon has 11 TFLs along with 11 sacks. Interceptions lead us straight. Jason Webster here, Rob Griffith. Um, some some new names here. Payma for INTs, looking like he's going to be defensive rookie of the year. Here. And uh, yeah, just pretty decent uh, uh, so far um, in the defensive category. Kick ain't looking so good right now. Not so good for uh, our kicker. Uh, Nick Brown here who is 9 of 12. This is probably one of my worst kicking seasons ever uh, So far three misses. I believe we only had like one or two we usually only have one or two this season and of course uh, for punting This burger was uh, the league leader before he got injured. So it's gonna be Donnie Jones here who is a rookie here in punting Looking around at the weekly awards here. We did uh, sweep the board for uh, 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 Players of the week for offense and defense here in week four um, Curtis Martin had a day uh, Like 200 200 combined uh, total yards a touchdown here John McGraw an interception a return for a touchdown and a fumble recovered uh, Return for a touchdown as well. We had a great week that week week five Of course that was a Wayne Corbett uh, week 
three touchdowns from him in the first half. He got most of these stats in the first half, but he ended up with 148 yards. We have, I believe, another play of the week. No, we do not, actually. So we're going to go to the horse trailer. And I believe we did get Wayne Corbett into that one. Yes, he did. And uh, I think this is our first uh, player of the week here for our series. I don't believe we got anything else after that. But, yeah, man, uh, finally getting on this, uh, this hollow ground of a board here uh, after three seasons of not making it. Pro Bowl here. This is the first time we are not uh, number one uh, in our quarterback role for Pro Bowl. They got Tom Brady over us. Uh, I mean, rightfully so. He's almost got more yards, but he has a better rating. And obviously, we haven't had uh, a best the best of games here. Chad Pennington throws literally a pick a game, and uh, you know that's my fault uh, personally uh, playing the game as a user. Dustin Long still up there, uh, third stringer. Curtis Martin, obviously, he's going to be up there. BJ Askew, obviously, he's going to be up there. And basically, I believe our whole offensive line is probably going to be up there as well. Fabini McKenzie, um, a little bit more variety here. But Zod is up there. Nutton is up there. Obviously, one of our best lines that we've had uh, in the series. So now we go to the rosters here. And, of course, we're taking on the Bills first. Um, not too much of a difference here from last season. Of course, they have uh, Drew Bretso, who is questionable. So we might not see him. We might see Ryan Dinwiddie, who was a rookie last season. We're probably going to see uh, more Travis Henry here, but maybe some Willis McGahee. I don't know how their depth, uh, depth charts are looking like. Probably not Jermell Lewis, though. Um, right now, they're still working with Roy Williams, and they still got Eric Moulds, but I believe Josh Reed and uh, Roy Williams are both ahead of Eric Moulds in the depth chart because they are younger. Um, but they have a pretty decent receiving core. You can't complain here with uh, with two near 90s, and then you still have a 90 there as your, I believe your, your what your Z receiver, or your uh, yeah your Z receiver. So yeah, um, pretty good, pretty decent offense, pretty decent line. The defense is probably what I'm going to be worried about. Of course, they still got Pat Williams, um, got London Fletcher, but he is injured. So they're gonna go out with 68 Brand, uh, with Brandon Spoon. So that might be a loss here. Takeo Spikes is still there. Um, pretty, uh, still a decent uh, a couple of our receivers uh, for the outside here. Winfield and Nate Clements. And then they got some rookies here. Reed, Kevin Thomas, who's 27, and uh, Dinon Sydney. Not too good of uh, uh, safeties, but they're pretty decent, so we shouldn't be worried about that. They have a horrible uh, kicker in Ryan Lindell, but he can still probably make those 30, maybe even 40 yarders. And Brian Mormon uh, still there, and uh, that's the Bills. So let's go right to the Raiders. Now, the Raiders have had a fall from grace. Of course, they won the Super Bowl in the very first season of this uh, series, and uh, of course, everybody else retired after that. So basically, they still they still have a pretty a decent defense, but they've been injury written. As you can see here, John Perella's injured for the season. Uh, Coleman's questionable for a uh, week 10. Um, it's not the best of teams here. They're still struggling on quarterback here. Uh, I believe they've been fluctuating between Harris and Krenzel. Tuasasopo is still here, but he has regressed all the way down to a 68. Um, Josh Harris should still be the quarterback here from the last time we played them. Uh, Gardner, uh, I don't believe he's playing. Uh, I think they got Cedric Houston here as the, uh, as the number one guy, but you never know. Gardner can still play. Uh, still a pretty okay receiving court. I mean, they got Jerry Porter. Uh, they just picked up Fred Gibson, who was an 84 off the gate. So, I mean, do with that as you may. Uh, Sloan Thomas from last season. Dennis Northcutt, I believe they picked him up uh, uh, last season. I don't believe he was still on the roster here. Yeah, they picked him up. They picked him up last season from free agency, and uh, he's been okay. I mean, nothing too, nothing too crazy here, especially on the offense. Uh, Jolly is still a, a, a pretty a decent um, a tight end here. Uh, pretty okay line, except for the right tackle position. Um, like I said, the defense has kind of been decimated here, but they still got Charles Woodson. They still got Philip Buchanan and uh, some uh, rookies here that they've been drafting. Uh, so far and i believe this is namdi awesome Wash, so i should put up his name here uh but let's get right into it our next uh game here is against the buffalo bills let's get right into it all right everybody and welcome back 
to East Rutherford here as we are going to be taking on the Buffalo Bills. Now, I want you guys to know that that advisory warning was something fierce because this game right here was something nasty. Of course, they're going to highlight Santana Moss, a $20 million man, uh, having a pretty decent season so far. But let's get right into it. First and 10 here. We are in the red zone. Pennington going to drop back, throw this one right to Ty Streets for the first touchdown of the game. And this one already getting started on a good note. A nice, perfect throw there by Chad Pennington right into Ty Streets. And it's going to be in the end zone for our first score. So later on here in the first quarter, we get the ball back with just a buck 50 left. Chad Pennington with a play action fake. Finds Santana Moss with some separation, and he gets a big grab and takes it all the way inside the 15 yard line. What an amazing throw there by Chad Pennington right to Santana Moss. The one and two connection always happening today. Second down and five, a couple plays later with just 38 seconds to go. Pennington going to give this one right to Curtis, my favorite. Martin is going to get into the end zone for Chad Pennington's second passing touchdown of the day. So just with 30 seconds left here in this first quarter, Travis Henry going to get take a hit there from Victor Hobson. And Donnie Abraham going to pick this one up and take this one right into the end zone for about a 15-yard fumble return for a touchdown. And yes, it gets even worse than this. We are up 21 here at the beginning of the second quarter here as Travis Henry has fumbled lightest once again. And Sean Ellis will get a, a, a fumble return for a touchdown. And it was even reviewed and it still stood. So now Sean Ellis, along with Donnie Abraham, has a fumble return for a touchdown. Now we are up 28 to nothing here. And then we're going to add on another touchdown as BG Askew does his best Santana Moss impression. Taking it into the end zone for a touchdown. And now in a no huddle situation, Dinwiddie going to try to throw this one. And it's going to get easily picked off there by Ed Reed. And Ed Reed will take it to the 40, to the 30, ultimately getting stopped there by Travis Henry inside the 20-yard line. This is absolutely insane. So a couple plays later, Pennington rolling off to the left there and finds Ty Streets again. Ty Streets, what another touchdown. And now we've increased our lead from... 35 to 42 here in this first half and then when he wasn't done with us yet donnie abraham's gonna take this one and get a nice little interception along with his fumble recovery to put us inside the 10 once again so of course naturally we're gonna have to try to score here and then santana moss gets into the action santana moss with his first official touchdown and this is chad pennington's fourth touchdown of the half but we weren't done yet. John McGraw wanted to be invited to the party there as he gets another interception. And then Woody with three INTs in three drives. This is absolutely insane. But we would end the half here with a 52-point first half. I thought I was playing NCAA 08 against FCS West or something because we are up 52 to nothing here. Dinwiddie gonna drop back here in the third quarter and he's not done with the interceptions. Beasley wants to get invited to the interception parley. This is absolutely insane. Already up here, 55 to nothing. We get another drive here and now Anthony Beck is in the end zone for a touchdown and that is Chad Pennington's fifth touchdown of the day and then we end up here in the fourth quarter now up 62 to nothing and Braylon Edwards wants to be invited to the touchdown party now up 69 to nothing nice that is amazing here as Braylon Edwards also wanted to get invited and then Curtis Martin said hey hold on you going to leave me out of this party after I just got a receiving touchdown let me get a rushing touchdown as he breaks two tackles Puts Ezel Reese into the IR, and he has a touchdown now. We are up 76 to nothing, and then Woody wasn't done yet. Ed Reed wanted to get another one. He gets another INT there to put us in scoring range, and we're not even trying to score at this point. We're trying to run down the clock, but they're going to give Curtis Martin his second rushing touchdown of the game and his third in total to win this one 83 to nothing this was an incredible game and i immediately 
went into I, I had I got secondhand embarrassment from that game. Chad Pennington, six touchdowns. Brooks Bollinger was in there with a touchdown. This was absolutely insane. Curtis Martin had three touchdowns, 166 yards, and two rushing touchdowns to boot. And then, of course, you want to see this Hall of Fame list for a <laughs> for a rod receiving core touchdown. Anthony Beck, Curtis Martin, BJ Askew, Santana Moss, Ty Streets with two, and Brayla Edwards with a touchdown. This was absolutely insane here, and this was quite the game. I mean, just absolutely madness right there, but we in this game 83 to nothing. They didn't even score a singular point. I definitely went back to the drawing board with the, uh, with the sliders. Tone those down a little bit because we should have never won that game. But they did have a backup quarterback. But I've never seen so many interceptions uh, here today. I think Dinwiddie has six INTs today. It was absolutely insane. Two forced fumbles, Travis Henry. Just a, a monster of a game here. But we end this one up. We end this one here, 83 nothing. And let's just get right into our next game here. We're going to be taking on the Raiders down there in Oakland. So here we are in the Oakland Alameda Coliseum, or at least that was the old name uh, that Boomer used to say. Here we are in California, taking on the Oakland Raiders. Now they still have Josh Harris, and I believe they still have a rookie. They have a rookie running back that they drafted this year, who we'll be seeing as we get an Ed Reed highlight finally after the two interceptions he got last game. Cedric Houston is their running back here, number 43. And hopefully he can be a good asset to this team. I know that Josh uh, Josh Harris has been, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I think kind of just been improving here as Houston gets a nice little game here. Um, but Josh Harris, uh, if you guys didn't know, he got drafted by the Jets initially in 2006. So um, he did switch from quarterback to wide receiver. And he had a, uh, I wouldn't say successful, but a mild, a mild-ish season here as we get absolutely dominated there. But I believe that was Garner there. Uh, but a second down, we're going to give it to Wayne Corbett here. Gets a nice little first down to keep the chains moving. First down and 10 here for the Jets here on an eye formation. Pennington going to swing this one right to Martin. Martin going to get a good amount of yards there. Breaks the tackle and gets the big first down. We're going to be here in second down in 10. And it's going to be Curtis Martin once again off the left-hand side. And he's going to get a nice little six-yard gain. Puts this in a third down situation here. Pennington going to throw this one right down the middle. Right to Braylon Edwards for the big first down. So here comes first and 10 once again. Pennington going to find Anthony Beck here. Going to make a man miss with a nice little juke there. And puts him inside the 10-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 here at the 10. And Martin can't hold on to it for the first time. It's going to be second down and 10. Martin. Pennington takes a big hit there. And luckily that wasn't a fumble off the play fake. Third down and 10 here. We're going to go with another play fake. Pennington roll off to the right. Tries to find Anthony Beck, but it's going to get tipped away there by Charles Woodson. And it will be a fourth down here. So we're going to give it to Nick Brown, who's had some troubles here this season, but he's going to kick this one right through the uprights. It's going to be good. And it's going to be three nothing here. Here, Josh Harris going to throw this dot right to Jerry Porter, getting a nice little first down here. Second down and 10. A couple plays later, Harris going to fall right into the arms of Sean Ellis here as the right tackle blocks uh, Sean Ellis right into Harris there for a big sack. So now third and long situation for Harris here, but it is going to be no problem as he throws yet another dot right to Gibson for the first down. And now they are past midfield. Harris going to try to throw this one right to Houston on the first down play. Gets a nice little six yard gain. It's going to be third and four here. Harris going to run right down the middle here. Marvin Jones as I was playing as and he just clearly misses the tackle but we got ed hartwell to cover that one ed reed almost getting a pick there and that was intended for jerry porter there so it's gonna be second down houston going to get a run but he's not going to find anything there as Corey webster is right there for the tackle third and nine here harris pump fakes throws this one almost right to aaron beasley for the interception and then they will get out of this one with a seabass field goal to tie this one three to three so a second and five play here nearing the end of the first quarter. Martin going to try to struggle past the line, but he barely gets the first down near. Finally getting tackled. It's going to be second down in 10. A couple plays later for Pennington. Back foot throw gives it right to Santana Moss, but they call it out of bounds. We would challenge this one here, and it looks almost clearly like it's a first down near, but they would be on our side. So we do get the first down on that play. Good challenge there by Herm. 
Pennington rolling off to the right there, but he's going to get absolutely mauled there. But I believe that was Nambi Asamoa. So it's going to be third down and 10 here. Pennington throws this one right into the air, and it's going to get intercepted by Gibson. A big pick there. And now the Raiders have some good field position here as they try to give it to Houston. He only gets about a two-yard gain. Second down and seven here for Harris. Clean pocket, throws this one, and it's going to get picked off by Donnie Abraham. So now the interception is going to go right back in our favor here as we made some mistakes, but they have made some even bigger mistakes as we get the ball back here. Gives it right to Santana Moss for the big first down. Second down and nine here for Pennington. Gonna get out of that blitz there by giving it to Curtis Martin. Tries to die, but he's not there yet. Gonna get it to the one yard line. Of course, you know we're gonna give it right back to Curtis Martin, our goal line merchant, and he's gonna take it into the end zone for our first touchdown of the game. So now here comes Harris here, throwing it all the way deep here. Has Gibson for a step, but Donnie Abraham is going to be able to break that one up. Second down and 10 here for Harris. Harris gets the blitz picked up there, but it's going to be incomplete. Third down and 10 here for Harris. Can he get out of this one? Has a clean pocket. Throws this one into double coverage to Porter. He's going to get tipped away by Abraham. And Porter also going to take a lick on the way out. So here comes Pennington on our possession. Going to give it to BJ Askew, and he's got some hands. Get your fullbacks involved, folks. You never know what's going to happen. Gets the first down. Pennington takes a hit there, but Braylon Edwards is there with the step and gets the nice little curl route first down. Second down and 10 here for Curtis Martin, but he's only going to get a couple yards on that one. Now it is third down and eight here. Under five minutes left here in this first half, and we're going to give it right to Santana Moss. And you can't leave Santana Moss with that much separation here, getting another touchdown here in this episode. So now down by 14 with just four minutes left. They're going to find a wide open Sloan Thomas, and Sloan Thomas is going to get a nice big catch there to put them in scoring position. A big, big first down there for the Raiders, who definitely really needed and here comes Josh Harris showing us the wheels there but Ed Hartwell once again near to stop him from getting any big time plays here and now they're gonna try to give it to Gabriel and a nice little open field tackle from Hobson or as we thought it was as he gets into that face mask there give him five yards and an automatic first down so here comes Houston once again gonna get a nice little run there gets about a five yard gain this time putting him in a second and manageable here comes Harris here, but he's immediately going to get sacked there by Branson Buckner. Buckner with a nice little sack there. Harris looked like he was going to try to go for the scramble there, but he loses a yard. Here comes third and six, and Josh Harris is going to beam this one right into Gibson's hands for a touchdown. And now it is a seven-point game here, and they've put themselves right back into this one. But here comes Chad Pennington trying to put a two-minute drill together. Throws this one off his back foot into coverage, but Curtis Martin's got his back, and he bails him out of that one. First and 10 here. What a timeout here from New York. They're going to find Ty Streets here, and he's going to get past midfield with another first down. Now driving down the field here. No huddle here for Pennington. He's going to find Anthony Beck once again, and Anthony Beck going to get a nice little first down crossing that yellow imaginary line here. Second down and 10. We try to give it to Ty Streets once again, but he does not have the hands like he used to. He's going to drop that one. Third down and 10 here for Pennington. Take some pressure there. Uh, is going to get sacked there, almost sacked uh, by number 75. So we settle for the field goal, and Nick Brown misses it once again wide right. So now we will only get out of here with just a seven-point lead here. 9-0 and this season, and the Raiders are threatening that right now. We get the ball here in the second half. Second down and 10. We're going to give it to Curtis Martin off the counter play, and he gets a nice little nine-yard gain there. Great run there, and he puts us in a third and manageable. So we're going to give it to BJ Askew, and he barely crosses that yellow line for the first down. First down play fake here as Pennington absolutely gets blown up there, but Wayne Corbett bails him out with a couple yards here. Second down and five here, and Wayne Corbett bails him out once again. The first down merchant always prevails, putting him past midfield. First down and 10 here with just over seven minutes left, and it's going to get deflected there by Charles Woodson. Second down and 10, Martin going to find a lane, breaks a tackle, and gets a decent amount of yardage to make it a third and manageable. So here we are, third and four, Pennington dropping back, finds Braylon Edwards for the screen, and he barely falls forward there for the big first down. So it's going to be first down and 10 once again here. Now six minutes and 30 seconds left here, and we're going to give it right to Terry Jackson. Our Heisman Trophy win again about four yards on that play. Here comes... 
Pennington once again. He's going to give it to Wayne Corbett, and Wayne Corbett got some room, and he finally gets taken down there by Charles Woodson. And now Pennington dropping back once again. They're going to get tipped away there by the line. Third down and 10. Pennington looking, rolling off to the left there, and just beams it. Tries to get Santana Moss there, but it's going to be incomplete. So we have to settle for three. Nick Brown with a much easier field goal attempt, knocks it through, and now it is a 10-point game here uh, in the second half. Here comes Josh Harris once again trying to run, but Ed Hartwell is there to stop him from getting those crucial first downs. Harris once again going to take some time in the pocket and find Gibson there for a nice first down passing midfield. Here comes Houston this time, and Houston gets about a four-yard gain on that run. And now they are trying to get down the field here to try to score to put them back in this game. And Houston is helping with that, almost getting the first down. He actually does get the first down. But Harris on this very next play gets absolutely annihilated by Sean Ellis. I believe that is his second sack of the day. Here comes Harris once again. Throws this one. Almost gets picked off by John McGraw, who already has, I believe, like three INTs this season. Here comes Josh Harris, and Josh Harris gets strip sacked by John Abraham. Luckily, it is picked up by his uh, by his offensive line, but they will have to punt this ball right back to us here as Curtis Martin gets a nice little modest four-yard gain to make it a third and manageable. So here we go, start of the fourth quarter. Penton on a third down. He's going to scramble here. Takes it past the 30, at the 35, and finally slides down to safety to get the big first down. Shout out Chad Vick out here, getting a nice little run. And then getting our fullbacks involved once again, BJ Askey with a nice seven-yard gain there. I believe his longest of his season. And then we uh, finish up that set of downs with a Curtis Martin first down. So we're just going to keep on running the football here, giving it to Terry Jackson. We have an elite running back core here, and we're going to keep on feeding the ball to our running backs. Once again, Curtis Martin, another first down, passing the 40. So we're having a good time here. Uh, but we're going to throw this one deep. Tries to give it to Santana Moss, bobbles it, but he holds it down and beats Charles Woodson by half a step there. Great play there and another big throw there from Chad Pennington. Then we're going to finish off with a B.J. Askew touchdown, man. Another touchdown there for B.J. Askew. I believe that's his first rushing touchdown of the season. And we almost have this one firmly in control here, up 27 to 10 here. But Josh Harris is not going to say die yet, giving this one right to Gabriel for the big first down. Almost passing midfield here. A couple plays later, second down and 12, giving it to Houston. But Marvin Jones is there for the tackle. Shout out Marvin Jones. Just found out he was he is a coach for the Tulsa Oilers here in the, uh, in the, uh, the IFL here. So it's a fourth down here. Josh Harris obviously going to have to go for it here. And he finds a wide open Gibson who is down the field at the 20 inside the 20 yard line and gets a big first down. Thankfully, Ed Reed gets the tackle. It comes Houston this time on a run, but Beasley is there for the tackle. Second down and nine here for Josh Harris and the Raiders. But he's going to get a backwards pass there from Gabriel and going to lose yards on that one. So it's going to be third down and 12. Harris dropping back, throws it right down the middle for Gibson, and he's going to get it right into the end zone for a touchdown. And now, game isn't quite over yet, but they're going to have to get an onside kick here. Sebastian Janikowski kicks it, but Wayne Corbett is there for the hands, and he gets a nice little uh, uh, recovery for us. Two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Martin breaking the tackle, following his blockers. I believe Nutton definitely got a, a holding call, but they didn't call it. So we're obviously going to get it. That was Zot there. Yeah, it looked like Zot was holding right there, but Martin just breezes past them. And, yes, we're going to pay off the rest for that one. Big touchdown there. 34-17. Last chance for Harris. Throws it down the middle. Gets Doug Jolly down the field, and he's going to take it inside the 20 right there. A buck 20 left, so, of course, they're going to go with the no huddle here. A couple plays later, first and five after a offside penalty from the no huddle. Harris going to throw this one. Going to try to give it to Sloan Thomas, but he's going to get a nice little open field tackle there. Uh, by Corey Webster. So it's going to be second down and one. Harris throws this one. Almost caught by Doug Jolly, but it's going to get knocked out of his hands there by Donnie Abraham. Third and one here. Harris throws this one right to Victor Hobson. And Victor Hobson, if you don't believe in the development of Victor Hobson, I don't know what you believe in because that was a big INT to end the game. We end up going 10 and 0 in the season, 34 to 17 shades of season one folks. And we are a much more tuned and refined machine here as we go into the light, the lighter half or the later half of the season. 
Curtis Martin, two touchdowns. BJ Askew with a touchdown. Our running back core was absolutely diming and dotting them up today. We just had sheer force there, especially in one of the drives where we just kept running down their throats. Santana Moss, what the only receiving touchdown today. Of course, we had to we had to chill out with the receiving touchdowns after uh, last game. Uh, big sacks here today. Sean Ellis, John Abraham, Brinson Buckner getting uh, big sacks here. Victor Hobson with the game ended interception. Donnie Abraham with the interception here. Big plays by all of our defense. I mean, we have one of the best defenses in the league, and we had one of the worst defenses in the league just a couple seasons prior. So we have done a complete turnaround here. We're going to keep adjusting the sliders because I got secondhand embarrassment from the 83 and 0 game. But. We beat the record, right? I believe the record is like 73 by the Bears who beat the Redskins back in like 1940. But we destroyed that record. We beat the Raiders as well. We go 10 and 0. I believe we got Tom Brady next. Um, I believe we have, I don't think, no, we played the Saints before, I believe. So uh, I think we got to have another NFC South team. Um, just a credible season right now, but we're going to be facing off against the best of the best later on this season. So we definitely got to uh, keep our keep our boots strapped up and, and get ready to stomp out on those appointments. Thank you guys so much. I know it took a little bit longer to make this video. I have been uh, a little bit down on trying to make these videos. And of course, editing a 83 to nothing video is kind of a downer because I know that we should have some more competitive games, especially like how we had a competitive game with the Panthers. But nevertheless, I am rambling. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow the playlist for more. And I'll see you guys in the next Jets video. Peace.